Okay, so hey everyone, and welcome to Networking 101, Level Up Your LinkedIn. For our agenda, I'll start by introducing myself, followed by a brief overview of LinkedIn. Then I'll talk about how to level up your LinkedIn and some of the things that I did as well. And finally, we'll finish with some questions and answers. <clears throat> so my name is Edward Boato. I've been an, a GDSC executive lead since September 2022 and a member um, since September 2021. I've completed two years of studies in software engineering technology, and I've been in co-op since May 2022 as a software developer at Geotab. So I've worked in a back-end team um, on the intake server, as well as on a full-stack team working on customer-facing applications. Um, I also love travel, and I often plan trips around food that I want to eat. Uh, I love sci-fi and fantasy, um, watching like Star Trek Picard and reading Re Real of Time. Um, I'm by no means an expert on networking or LinkedIn, but I've personally applied everything I'm going to talk about, and I've had great results. So uh, when applying for co-op, I use LinkedIn to connect with a lot of recruiters and developers at various companies. And I was able to get multiple offers from companies that I connected with using the techniques that I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> so what is LinkedIn? It's basically a social network for professionals. Um, not all developers use it, but almost all recruiters use it. Um, so it allows you to learn topics that interest you. Um, and for those that don't know, you can use LinkedIn Learning for free with your Conestoga account. Um, you can keep in touch with fellow students, classmates, colleagues, as well as meet new friends, mentors, and find out about career opportunities. So here are the levels on LinkedIn that I'm going to cover. First is to complete your profile. Second is to increase your visibility. Third is to build your connections. Fourth is to deepen your connections. And fifth will be how to use it for searching for jobs. So first, ideally you want to have a photo that is clean and clearly shows your face. Um, now, oftentimes people, this isn't absolutely a requirement, but it doesn't hurt. Um, you wanna have a headline that draws attention and not just your job title or your program. <clears throat> your summary should tell your story, ideally. Um, show a little bit of personality as well. And you wanna include all of your relevant skills and keywords, both technical and non-technical and talk about your experiences that you've completed, uh, both work and volunteer, and show your accomplishments. Um, you want to treat your profile like it's your resume, uh, but with a more personal touch. Uh, don't forget to include your college education as well and show your expected graduation date, um, because I've heard firsthand from recruiters that they like to use that to determine whether or not you're going to be available to work, and that could determine whether or not they will um, reach out to you. Um, include any certificates, um, whether it be from college or university or um, online courses, for example, LinkedIn Learning, uh, Udemy, edX, and so on. And also include any endorsements and recommendations you can get. Um, you could ask previous employers or professors and as well as senior coworkers as well. Um, these are really great because it's like having a reference um, without them having to actually call your references. <coughs> So for level two, you want to increase your visibility on LinkedIn. Um, you can do this by um, adjusting your settings, for example, open to work or indicating your preferred jobs or saving job alerts. Um, this will tell the algorithm that this is what you're interested in. So when recruiters are posting jobs or looking for people that are interested in that sort of stuff, the algorithm will be more likely to show your profile to them. <coughs> Uh, you want to follow relevant hashtags and companies, um, follow recruiters as well as thought leaders, um, you know, maybe like CEOs of companies you want to work for or CTOs um, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Joining groups is good, um, but also be engaged. Um, so when you see interesting posts, make sure that you like them, react to them, reshare them and comment. Um, in addition, post your own activities and insights. Um, the more you do this, the more the algorithm will um, show you to other users, um, which will allow recruiters to see you as well as, you know, um, your own connections will see you more as well. Um, once I had the majority of my connections from tech-related companies and surpassed 500 connections, 
I saw a major increase in the number of impressions on my posts. And also, um, sorry, for those that don't know, impressions means the number of times that my post was shown to a user. Um, and also the number of people that are looking at my profile or finding me through search has really gone up a lot. So um, these things definitely do work. Um, if you can get your visibility up and your connections up. <clears throat> so how do you build your connections? Uh, this would be level three. Build your connections through groups, clubs, like the GDSC, uh, Discord channels. Um, in school, you can find it in class or in any sort of workshops. <clears throat> I highly recommend attending lots of events. Um, there's career office events, hackathons, meetups, GDSC as well. And finally, you can do it through LinkedIn searching. So I recommend to be active in your chats, um, whether it be school or Discord or um, any sort of clubs. <clears throat> Post a profile, a link to your profile, and invite others to connect to you and connect with anyone else that posts theirs as well. Um, that's a great way to get connections. Um, when you attend events, the easiest way to get connections is through big events like hackathons. Um, Personally, I attended Hack the North this year and I got over 100 new connections um, that are mostly um, engineers or recruiters or developers at tech companies. So it's a really a great way to expand your connection base. <clears throat> um, career, career fairs are also great as well. Um, you should always ask recruiters if you can connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, so then when you do connect with them later, they can remember um, that they talked to you. And uh, speakers as well. Um, if you attend any of the, the co-op office at Conestoga, they often have um, events and panels. Uh, I highly recommend attending those as well and reaching out to the speakers. <coughs> You'll have a much better chance of connecting if you add a note, uh, and I'll explain more on that later. So the more connections you have, the better. It gives you more visibility and more people to potentially help you. Uh, I also suggest to recommend all to accept all requests and don't have to others. You don't have to be friends or know each other personally. Um, it's not really what it's about. Um, it's more just about like connecting and, you know, you won't necessarily have a chat with every single person that you connect with on LinkedIn, but you might. Uh, and you never know where that'll take you later. Uh, for example, one of the developers on my team, on uh, my co-op, he left our team and took a senior developer position at a com another company uh, and he did that by having a meeting with somebody on LinkedIn who he hadn't seen for 15 years. Um, so you never know um, when you might connect with people later on a deeper level. So basically now I'll talk about level four, which is deepening your connections. <clears throat> so you want to try and engage your, through your connections posts, um, like I mentioned, um, but there's a difference between connecting by just liking things, um, but it's better if you leave thoughtful, positive comments. It's even better if you reshare and along along with a comment. Um, you want to try and have bigger, deeper connections by reaching out directly. Um, you can add notes to connection requests um, and then follow up in chat after you connect. Um, by having active chats with connections. Um, it allows you to build a much deeper connection and relationship. Um, you'll often have too many connections to connect with personally on a, on a deeper level without getting overwhelmed. So I recommend to be strategic about who you really want to build a deeper connection with and why. For example, I mostly focus on recruiters or developers who work at companies that I want to work at. Um, but I won't refuse to chat with other people. But that's more where I focus on who I um, will reach out to. And you always want to ask questions that encourage people to respond. So open ended questions. Um, you know, don't say, uh, oh, so you worked at Google? Because then they'll just say yes. You want to say, oh, I see that you worked at Google. That's great. I've always wanted to work at Google. How do you like how do you like your role? And how did you come to get that position? Um, so something along those lines where it forces them to give a more detailed answer. Um, and then you always want to ask questions that um, acknowledge what they've said as well. So 
you want to make sure that if you're chatting with somebody that it's clear that you're listening to what they're saying and that you're you're following up on what they're saying and you're not just like jumping straight to what you want to talk about um, your connection should be reciprocal and it should be a give and take relationship as much as possible um, you don't want people feel to feel like they're being used um, you want it to be um, more natural so one of the things that I like to do is um, to try to set up a meeting. Uh, virtual is good, but in-person is definitely better. Um, but of course, your mileage may vary. Um, this is a great way to establish uh, mentorship with people more organically, because your initial conversation with a mentor might only take 20 minutes. Um, but then oftentimes, you can turn to them for advice later. Um, and you never know. Later on, you may be able to help them as well. So, And always express thanks for any help that you receive. So to follow up on deepening your connections, there's a little activity I have here. So in this scenario, you attended an online event and this was one of the speakers. How could you connect to them to learn more about their experience as a Conestoga grad and a software developer? So we can see here that, that this person graduated from Conestoga College and works at Google as a software engineer. Um, so does anyone want to, you could either jump in, unmute yourself or throw in the chat. Like, how do you think would be a good way to reach out to this person and connect? Any thoughts? So probably the worst way would be to just mash that connect button. Um, okay. So no ideas? <laughs> yes, a customized note message, perfect. Um, someone else says they would ask, what are the three essential qualities to make a successful career at Google? Yeah, that's good as well. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, so I like to use this basic formula. Um, so basically, how do they know you? or how do they know me, or how do I know them, something that I liked about them, or an optional highlighting something that we have in common, uh, and then what do I want to know about, or what do I want from them, and then a follow-up, like what do, I, what do we want to do to follow up. So here's an example. Hey, Ash, I was chatting with our mutual connection about working at Google, and she mentioned that you love working there. I was really inspired by your background as I am currently in the same program you completed at Conestoga. I would love to hear more about your experience as a Conestoga grad and your path to working at Google. Are you available for a 30 minute chat sometime? Hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Edward. So first I identified that we had seven mutual connections. I don't know if you caught that, but um, they were there. So I chatted with one of them or all of them to find out more. Sometimes you can get connections to reach out on your behalf and connect you. Um, here, I'm doing it myself. Second, I identified a similar educational background, which I was inspired by because it's rare to find a Conestoga grad working at a top tech company like Google. Third, I clearly stated what I wanted to learn about. So I wanted to learn about their experience as a grad and their path to working at Google. Fourth, I asked for a one-to-one -one chat and gave a clear time to show that it would be short. Hopefully, if things go well, the time won't really matter. Uh, I found that if people enjoy chatting, they usually won't, uh, they won't cut it off at 30 minutes. Or if they have to go, they'll be more willing to chat again soon. So you can use this formula whether you just met somebody online or if you've actually met somebody in person, um, whether that be at a career fair or an event. Um, I've used it for recruiters that I met at career fairs. Um, mentors that I met at hackathons, as well as random people I've found in chat groups or through LinkedIn posts. Uh, for example, if you attended my resume critique workshop, 
Um, both speakers were connections that I met at career fairs who later helped me with advice, mentorship, and by attending my GDSC event. And just a note, you should expect to be ignored. Keep trying with more people and don't be encouraged though. Um, oftentimes people get a lot of messages and they just don't have time to respond to everyone. Um, but even if you're ignored by 10 people, the 11th person might be the one that meets with you and helps you land your dream job later. So don't give up. Okay, continuing on, here's another example for following up after an event. This one has a bit more personality and a more specific ask, but it has the same basic format, even if it's not necessarily in the same order. So here we have, hey, Victoria, it was great hearing from you on the employer panel at Conestoga College. I really enjoyed hearing about your DJing experience. I don't have experience in that field. However, I am renowned for my guitar hero proficiency. I will be looking for co-op roles for the fall term, and I would love to connect with you to learn more about working at your company. Would you happen to have 15 minutes to connect over the next few weeks? I would love to learn more about how I can strengthen my application for the fall. I'm also happy to send questions over LinkedIn if that's easier for you. So this one's really great because Victoria clearly showed her personality in the event uh, by talking about her unconventional experience as a DJ. So this message sort of tries to reflect that with like a fun intro um, that shows interest in her interests. Use your judgment based on what you saw of the person's personality if they were very formal, you should be formal. Um, if they were more fun and casual, you could feel free to do the same within reason. It helps to briefly acknowledge their interests, especially if you have the same interests or something similar. Okay, so the next level, level five, searching for jobs. So you see a job ad or you're interested in working at a company. Do you have connections that work there or used to work there? Or do you see anyone working there that you can connect with? Uh, looking for commonalities to break the ice. Job ads are often shared by connections, but you should also actively search for jobs through LinkedIn. If your connection shares a job, you can reach out to them directly to talk about it. So here's another scenario. If you're interested in a job posted at Company X. You meet the criteria specified in the job posting, but so do set 30 other applicants. How do you stand out from the competition? Use LinkedIn. Uh, can, does anyone have any ideas on what they would do to help them land this job? Feel free to unmute or uh, drop a comment in the chat. So we have a suggestion to drop a personalized message to the recruiter. Yep, that's great. Um, what about if you don't know who the recruiter is? TD is a pretty big company. Any other ideas? Okay, so for me, the first thing I would see in this job posting is that I have three connections who work here and 431 school alumni as well. Yeah, so search for the person who posted. Yep, I would try to connect with at least one manager. Yep, yep, those are great. Um, sometimes though, you can't see who posted it. Sometimes you can, I think that they can choose whether or not you can see them. For this one, I was not able to see who posted it. Um, and then connecting with the manager would probably be difficult again, because TD is a very large company, 10,000 plus employees. But LinkedIn makes it a little bit easier, though, because I have three connections who work there. And I have 431 people who, I, who went to Conestoga that work there as well. Um, so I would start by talking to those connections. And if those connections don't work, I would reach out to some alumni, for example, um, people that also went to the same program as me and who now work there. Uh, maybe their managers there, maybe even higher than managers. Um, those would be all great people to connect with. Um, those connections, they can help you get referrals. 
So depending on the company and the role, a referral from one of those three could land you a final interview straight away. Uh, this happened to me with a mentor I connected with through a hackathon. During the hackathon, I had a one-to-one -one for 30 minutes with, a, with one of the mentors. Later, when the co-op jobs got posted, I reached out to her to talk about it. A few days later, I was contacted by HR and offered an interview, skipping the technical interview portion and just going straight to the final interview. Um, or those connections might give you a referral that might get you, um, might, might just ensure that your resume gets looked at by a person. Um, oftentimes companies use, especially large companies like TD, they use automated uh, resume systems. And if there are a thousand resumes, you might not even, um, you might be in the top half, but that might not be shown to the actual manager. Um, you might not be in the top 20, let's say. Um, the manager might say, I want the top 20, you might be 25. Um, so then you may never get seen. But if you get a referral from somebody in the company, you're much more likely that the manager will look at your resume either way, um, which is a huge advantage. In addition, connections can give you inside tips. Um, they can help you learn about the job, about the team, about the company overall. Um, these are all things that you can use in interviews to stand out. Um, you can learn about more about the hiring process, the interviews and the types of questions. Um, so if you know, say you're applying for associate software engineer, they might be able to tell you like, okay, for these types of questions, we only do, um, let's say, um, lead code medium, easier medium, and we only do, um, you know, we never do graphs. We only do array questions for this type of job. That's a huge advantage to you because now you can focus on what you're going to do to prepare for that interview. They can also help you decide if you actually want to work there at all. Maybe they tell you that they're that this team has massive tech debt, um, that the culture isn't doesn't match with what you want. Um, they could tell you there's some sort of deal breaker for you. Um, so maybe you just don't apply for this job and you dodged a bullet because maybe you would have hated it there. Um, so even if you don't get in, you now have a deeper connection that can help you get in next time. And you know, they're if they're an engineer, they might move around a lot too. So um, they might work at TD now, but they might work somewhere else later. Um, and you can help each other out down the road. So I definitely recommend um, using those connections as well as using the alumni. Okay. So for the next example, I am showing the posting where the recruiter is shown. Um, so this, this person chose to show that they're the recruiter, in which case you're the, um, our attendees advice to connect directly with the recruiter is perfect. Um, you can message them, you can add them, and you can talk about the recruitment process from directly with them. Um, it show, you can also show them your personality a little bit. Um, I've had good success through recruiters at career fairs this way by connecting with the recruiters or developers who are on the recruitment team. I was able to show personality and enthusiasm about the job and the company. It makes you more likely that you'll get an interview and get hired. You have an advantage over other applicants if they already know you. Um, for example, if two resumes are equal and two people ace the technical interview, it's going to come down to the person with the best fit. That's more likely to be the person that they already know. So you want to be the person that they already know in that situation. Okay, so you should also investigate the company itself. Um, LinkedIn shows you your connections who work at a company. So if you really want to work at Google, this is your dream. Here's 101 people who went to Conestoga College that work at Google. Um, you can talk to these people. Um, most of them will probably ignore you, but you know what? If one of them, if one of them will connect with you and meet with you, that's huge, right? Like, um, it is so helpful to be able to use LinkedIn to find these people at a huge company. You know, 300,000 employees. You can find the ones that went to Conestoga College. Um, and oftentimes alumni are willing to speak to students from the programs that they came from or from the, the colleges that they came from as well. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you should definitely research, research any company that you're applying to. The more you know about the company, its culture, its and its business, the better. Um, it helps to convey your passion for the job and show your enthusiasm for interviews as well. Um, so finally for job search, um, here's an example of uh, the Google page, um, it shows me 
that these are connections. These are people who my connections know. Um, so I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it looks like I have multiple people who I have multiple connections um, in common with. So these secondary connections could help with the job application as well if I wanted to work at Google. The best way to reach out to them would be to first reach out to our mutual connections and ask them to connect me. Um, you can connect with them directly and include a note like we, we discussed before. Um, so definitely consider that if there's a specific company that you really want to work for. This is one of the strategies, like instead of just sitting and waiting and applying every time they post a job ad, you could be more proactive and try to learn more and maybe try to get a referral because referrals are huge at tech companies. And if one of these people would give you a referral, that gives you a huge leg up on the thousands of others that apply. Okay, so next is bonus level six, give back. Make sure that you help your connections in any reasonable way that you can. Always thank them, cheer on their accomplishments, and connect them to your connections when they ask. Help others who reach out to you as well. Um, give advice and referrals when you're in a position to do so. Um, also follow up and let, let people know how their meeting with you helped you. You know, did you crush an interview thanks to somebody's advice or land a job thanks to somebody's referral? Let them know and thank them. When the time comes that others reach out to you for help, always remember to help them as well. Networking is about helping each other and you should strive to give, each, give as much as you take. And that was all that I had. Are there any questions or comments? Feel free to unmute. Does everybody here have a LinkedIn? Someone's saying that they can't unmute. Um, let me see if I can find out how to. Huh, I can't see how to unmute people. Um, I'm going to see if I could just make everybody hosts. And then um, for those that have been given host status, are you able to unmute? Yeah, so feel free to unmute and ask me questions. You are on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I somehow I ended up on mute. <laughs> um, so yeah, if does any if anyone has any questions or comments, um, please feel free to unmute. Um, you should be able to unmute now. Um, if you have any. Um, maybe tips of your own as well that you want to share, um, please feel free as well.
Okay, so if there's no questions or comments, um, that was all. Um, sorry. The uh, I do have a question here, Edward. So when, when we are approaching people on LinkedIn, yeah. Uh, what what uh, like how? What to do if they don't reply? Uh, what is the ideal time to follow up with them? Um, so I would recommend wait at least three to five days, um, depending on like the urgency of it. Um, generally, uh, you want to give people some time because uh, most likely they're just busy. Um, All right. Yeah. But yeah, like um, if they don't mess, they don't respond in like three to five days. You could try again, maybe like a week or two later. Um, if they still don't respond, then just move on. Um, definitely, a lot of people, to be honest, like will ignore you. Um, people are busy. Um, you know, for example, using the example of somebody that works at Google, they probably get quite a few people messaging them. So yeah. you have to expect that that will happen. So you just have to move on. Um, what I'd recommend is like research the person as much as you can read their profile, um, yeah. see what their interests are, see what they do, um, what they've done, where they've worked, where they go. Uh, maybe if they have a link to their GitHub, check out their projects. Um, yeah. if you see some interesting project or, um, something that they've done, ask them about it. That's a great way to get, to break the ice, you know, like yeah. if, if people are bombarding me, asking me for like referrals or questions about working at Google, I'm more likely to ignore that. But if yeah. I have a passion project that I love, I work on this, um, you know, on GitHub, I have it shared and it's my, um, it's my app that I made and it's my pride and joy. If you message me asking about my app, I'm more likely yeah. to respond to you about that. And then, you know, you can then you maybe transition into like, Hey, so I saw you worked at Google. Like, how do you like it? You know, how did you manage that coming from Conestoga? It's so inspiring, you know, so you can sort of take a roundabout way. All right. But yeah, great question. Anything else? Hi, Edward. Um, I'm Prije. Can you hear me? Yes. So, uh, I would really like to know how did you got into geotech and I was also checking your personal portfolio and it looks really great. Thank you. So um, can, yeah, please. So sorry, what was the, can you just repeat the first part of the question? So, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, you're working at the uh, geotech, right? Yes. So I would really love to know how did you got uh, a job at uh, geotech so how did you manage to pull it off okay uh, how so, was it for you yeah so working at geotab uh it's actually kind of funny because uh one of the things that i mentioned was attending the career events through the co-op office um i don't remember when it was exactly but it was um it would have been probably in the fall of 2021 or this the winter of 2022, they had an event that was like an employer panel. One of the employers on the employer panel was from Geotab. So he talked a lot about um, like what they were looking for in the company culture. And uh, they mentioned that they have like CSGO Fridays and stuff like that. So it sounded like a really cool place to work. So I added, I messaged him on LinkedIn. I, I put a note, I said, you know, I think it's really cool that you guys have CSGO Fridays. Um, sounds like a really fun place to work and I'd love to know more. So I had a chat with that, with that person from Geotab and, uh, he gave me a lot of good advice. Um, you know, things, things they look for in the interview, the interview process, um, what sort of things, basically like what sort of things would give me a leg up, um, to get in. And, um, it's not like I wasn't given an interview right away just for messaging him, but I learned a lot about the company and sort of like how, like what they want in an, in a co-op and what in an intern, um, that gave me a lot of confidence and gave me a lot of extra information going into the interview that I think 
was able to help me impress them a lot more in the interview than I would have if I hadn't messaged that recruiter. Um, so I think that that was basically the biggest factor in me getting in there. Also researching what the tech stack is for the company. So talking to the recruiter, I learned that their tech stack was C Sharp, .NET Core, SQL, um, they use GCP, um, Kubernetes, um, you know, that sort of stuff. So I made sure I have a, one of my personal projects is um, an inventory tracker. So I made sure I, I went through the solid principles and I made sure I implemented them all. Um, I made sure that I followed the best practices um, on that, on the server end of that um, personal project. And uh, later on, one of the developers on my team mentioned to me that they creeped my, uh, my GitHub and they were impressed by my, um, my application with C Sharp. So they, people definitely do look at it. So uh, when you're doing your GitHub, you know, you're going to have a lot of, you know, tutorial type projects. Don't make those public. Make sure that the ones you have pinned publicly on the front of your GitHub are the ones that you're proud of. Um, and try to make sure if you're applying for a company that has a specific tech stack, make sure that you have things at the front of your GitHub that highlight your ability with that tech stack. Does that answer your question? Oh, wow. I mean, from CS to GeoTab sounds, sounds fun. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah, so one question from my side, Edward. Uh, so in your opinion, like I would like to ask you, like what are the most important elements uh, of a strong LinkedIn profile you can suggest or like how can someone improve their uh, certain type of uh, fields on the LinkedIn? We can uh, work on it. Mm -hmm. Um, personally, mine is always a work in progress. Um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So every like few months I'm like, I'm tweaking it. So I don't know exactly what the best is per se, but I highly recommend look at other people's LinkedIn, like people who are maybe, um, they're doing what you want to do, you know, like people working as developers, senior developers at companies you want to work at, look at what their profiles look like, um, see what they've highlighted, um, stuff like that. Um, I tend to put, um, personally, I feel like my LinkedIn profile has too much stuff. Um, like I have like recommendations, I have like a bunch of projects. Um, but sometimes it's, it's not such a bad thing to have more stuff than less. Um, because more likely, I think that somebody can see something they like. Um, but yeah, um, I think everyone's going to be different. You definitely want to have some of your pro your personality in there. Um, I mentioned earlier that I really love traveling. Like my my banner photo is a photo I took while I was hiking in the mountains in Switzerland. Um, so just little things like that show your personality um, in your description. Um, don't just like list off you know a list of skills. Like try to like put it in sentences. Show how you talk. Um, show um, you can show your communication skills as well as your personality and your interests, um, and try to give people an idea, not just of your technical skills, but your soft skills as well, because that's also really important. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Edward, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And by the way, like, um, so like, uh, as you mentioned, like, uh, to uh, your profile contains too much stuff, right? So like, is it like helpful in terms, uh, like in the eyes of recruiters, like this person posts regularly, this person has everything on his profile or like recommendation uh, through like from recommendations to sk uh, adding your skills, like 50 or 60 skills you added on LinkedIn <laughs> or like, yeah. So th are, are those, things are mandatory to be on your LinkedIn? Um, I would say nothing is necessarily mandatory. Probably the only things that are mandatory are your current education, 
and ideally your like recent experience like your um, any work or volunteer experience you've had in the last couple of years um i would say those are mandatory um but i mean other than that um yeah it's up to you like some of some recruiters uh really love to see certain things others don't um so i feel like my profile i think i have too much because i'm sort of trying to catch them all right like um I try to put something there for like every possible like recruiter, um, but that's not necessarily a good thing and it's not required. Um, so your mileage will vary. Um, yeah. Uh, but I think definitely look at, look at a lot of other people's profiles and see which ones look good. See which ones, you know, who's working at companies you want to work at and see what they did and see what, if anything out there like inspires you to add to your profile. Um, I think that's a great way to go about it because no profile is gonna be like the perfect profile for every situation. Thank you so much, Edward. Yeah, no problem. Cool, any other questions or comments? Anyone have any tips for the rest of us? Okay. So thank guys, thanks everyone for attending the workshop. I hope you found it useful. Uh, best of luck to you all in your networking and job searching. And uh, feel free to connect with me later on LinkedIn if you want as well. And have a good night. See you, everybody. You're welcome.